young black father was killed during a custody exchange outside of the police station. Let me give you some background to this story. According to WTVR, a 33 year old father, Stuart D. Jeffries, was gone down by his ex wife's new boyfriend last week. This was at a Virginia police station. Jeffries, let's put his picture up. Mr. Jeffries, who had gone to drop off his eight year old daughter, was killed in front of her in the parking lot during the custody exchange. The Chesterfield Police Department confirmed that Jeffries was shot Sunday evening in the parking lot of the Appomattox Police Station, 2920 West 100 Road. The incident took place at around 6.30 PM last week on January 16th. Jeffries was dropping his daughter off after spending the weekend with her. That's according to the statement from the police department. Now I bring this to your attention for a very specific reason. We'll get into that in a minute. A family member of Jeffries posted about this senseless shooting on Facebook and said, and I quote, cuz was shot and killed trying to be a good father. There are so many unnecessary killings going on in our community. We have so many so called wannabe gangsters that would kill someone over stupid mess. Everyone is walking around with a gun trying to prove they ain't soft. I myself was guilty of this stupidity. Killing someone doesn't make you a man, but walking away does. The killer has been identified as a 44 year old man named Corey D. Goodson Sr. Goodson was arrested at the scene. He has been charged with second degree murder and the use of a firearm in the commission of a felony. Two parties met to complete a child custody exchange. This was in the parking lot at the station. It was confirmed by Chesterfield police in an email. At the time of the exchange, there was an on duty officer working his patrol vehicle in the station parking lot. The officer was facing away where the custody exchange was occurring, okay? So let me break it down this way. There's an eight year old daughter, an eight year old child who has seen her father killed in front of her. The father did the very responsible thing and made sure the exchange took place at a police station for protection in case anything went bad, things went as bad as they could go, okay? This story is still developing, but here's what has to happen. Naturally, the man who did this, the monster who did this has been arrested, he's in jail. He will likely never get out, but there's an eight year old daughter, there's a child, who no longer has a biological father, but it speaks to a larger dynamic. The larger dynamic is me and you, us doing what we have to do in order to be examples and to mentor others around us. You know, I hear people say all the time, and I looked at the social media post around this story, what people are saying, this generation is lost, these young people are lost. These people are lost. Think about this, anytime you say a generation is lost, you are indicting yourself. If I say my cell phone is lost or my keys are lost, my cell phone didn't lose itself. My keys did not lose itself, I lost them. So anytime we talk about a lost generation, we're the ones who lost them. That means that we are at least in some way indicting ourselves in that statement. And I'm fine with the indictment because we all need to do more. So allow this story as tragic as it is, as heartbreaking as the reality of this story is, allow it to be a catalyst to motivate you to do more, to be more active, to be more aware, to provide guidance and mentorship to those who need it around you. You know, Dr. King said it perfectly, everybody can be great. 
because everybody can serve. Jackson, what are your thoughts on this story? I think that that's a really, really great, great you know, way to look at this story. And you know, everybody can relate. You know, as I'm, we talked a little bit about this. I'm about to turn 30, and now as I enter, you know, kind of this real stage of my manhood and adulthood, I've had enough experience to really understand the importance of what it means to, you know, stabilize a community, give to a community. You know, the things that people miss growing up. You start to understand the impacts when you were just a kid. You know, you get caught up in a lot of things, just looking for acceptance, just trying to make sense out of life. But, you know, as you get older, you start to see the importance of really, really giving back to communities where people may not even have the chance to make it to see 30, 40. As this young man, you know, who was only a couple years older than me, lost his life yeah. just trying to make an exchange. And a lot of that just goes back to the everyday lifestyles that people have to live. And so, you know, as people like ourselves get to break out and, you know, someone like you who gets honored and respected uh, by people across the board for the work that you do is a great inspiration for people to do the same because, you know, a lot of people, you know, people like to think that they're so self made and they mm -hmm. made it out of the struggle. But when you really look at things, they probably had, you know, some good leadership somewhere. If it wasn't directly right. in the house, they had some type of leadership. They had somebody they could lean on when things really, really got bad enough. And that's really ultimately what makes the difference. And that's what we can be for each other and for people in these communities who don't have a way out like we did. So, so well said, brother. I had to challenge someone on my radio show who tried to use my life as an example of, well, if you can do it, anyone can do it. Well, I benefited from three primary things that have to be highlighted. Number one, I benefited from a progressive policy. Number two, I benefited from that progressive policy allowing me to seek higher education. And number three, I benefited from mentorship inside of a faith based community. Those three elements changed my life. Because of those three things, I fight for those for the for the sake of others who are in situations uh, similar to the situation that I was in as a teenager. Um, so no, you cannot do this by yourself. Uh, it takes mentorship, it takes guidance, and it also takes good policy in combination with that.